Hey, hey, developers, I thought today I would show you some of my favorite Visual Studio Code extensions, plugins, basically for your Visual Studio Code application. So if you guys don't already know, Visual Studio Code is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, for your all sorts of projects, for your web development projects. It's a great editor. Um, I still love Vim, but I'll tell you one reason I'm really liking Visual Studio Code. So let's go and take a look at it. So I have it open here, and I'll make this a little bit bigger. So you can already see that there's some things that look maybe a little bit different than what you're used to. Uh, first off, first off, you can see here there's a little squiggly marks underneath this. So I have an Angular app open here. This is an Angular 5 app. But this will really work with anything that you have. And if you look at some of the installed extensions that I have, you'll notice I have a bunch of Angular ones, but one I really like uh, is TSLint, and we're going to get to this prettier in a second. So there's TSLint, there's ESLint, there's JSHint, and what these are all are is they're ways that you can kind of look for suspicious, suspicious usage in your programs written in JavaScript, and you can have certain rules in place that way that if these rules are true or not true that you'll get errors in your in your development environment letting you know that there's a problem so in my example since i'm using visual studio code and i'm using angular it has a built-in file called tslint.json and this comes kind of pre-built every time you create an angular app and you'll see something similar for react and something similar for vue.js as well um, not, not TSLint, but I believe they have ESLint files. So you can see there's a whole bunch of rules here, and this is just um, by default. So here's one. You can see here curly equals true. So like, well, what does that mean? So what that means, <clears throat> if we open this up, and actually I actually already brought it up, you can go to the TSLint website, and you can kind of search for the different rules and see what they do. And this says that, you know, enforces braces for if, do, while statements. So this is a common problem. You might have an if statement, foo, equal, 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 bar, and you don't have an open and closing bracket. So, but the next line is foo plus plus, but the third line is bar plus plus. And you notice, obviously, this will be a problem because it'll execute foo plus plus, but not bar. And as you can see here, if you forgot the braces, bar plus plus will never be executed. So there's obviously an error there, so it'll let you know. So we can take a look at that if we, uh, let's say we're back into our TypeScript file here. And by the way, this is obviously TypeScript. So if I did kind of if, uh, I don't know, if true, and then I did foo plus plus, and then bar plus plus, you can see I'm already getting a bunch of errors. So let's see what it says. So if statement must be braced curly. So that's exactly what we expected because we have that rule turned on. And another common rule is, so you can see here, these, there's quotes here. So if we go look back at our TSLint file, we have, we have indention true. I believe there's a quote one in here too. If you look for quote, quote mark, you can see it's true. So it's, it expects that the, there is single quote marks. And we can see here, if we look in our TypeScript file here, we have double quotation marks. So it obviously gives an error. So now this is all fine and dandy, but wouldn't it be nice if we could just do something like save the file and it would automatically make the changes for us? You can obviously you can tell this can become real nitpicking and annoying after a while having all these squiggly red lines under everything because you didn't do something right. Um, so what we could do is we'll, we'll go back up here and we'll look at another really cool extension called Prettier. And Prettier is allows you to automatically format your code based on a set of rules. So let's look here. All right, so after you get Prettier installed, you have a choice here. You have you can set up some defaults. By default, it doesn't format on save, but you can turn that on. And it's kind of hard to see here, probably. But there's also some other defaults, like it defaults the print width 80. So if you, everything goes over 80, it 
kind of puts it in the right format. And by the way, it has single quote, but the default is false. So we can actually turn that on. So let's see if that works. So let's do these two. Let's do, let's do the editor format on save and then the, the prettier and the prettier uh, single quote. So we're going to go back here and to make these changes, there's a few ways to do it, but one of the easiest is go to file preferences settings. And you can see here, I have some user settings. So we'll just go ahead and add it to the user settings. Let me just make a comma here. Oops. Let me just paste it. All right. So we have the format on save true. And we just want to add one more. So we'll add in this prettier single quote. So now we'll put in prettier single quote and we'll do true here as well. So we have both of those turned on. And to make this work, we'll go ahead and go ahead and close it and reopen it. So we'll close it. And I will just type it in again, Visual Studio Code, and reopen. OK, great. So I'm going to close this. So now we're in the same file before. We still have all the red squiggly lines. So let's just save it. File, save. It all went away. Look at that. So we have. We have one error here. That's just because we don't have on in it imported in. But you see, it's, it, it saved all our problems. So now we uh, have single quotes here, and it fixed it all. So it also does formatting for us. So obviously, we, if we kind of have the wrong tabs, it'll format there for us. So I mean, just right there, that'll save us a ton of time and a, a bunch of wraps. So as soon as we start writing, it'll do all this formatting for us every time we save. So I mean, some other things it does, it puts the tab width at two, trailing comma to none, bracket spacing to default true. So a lot, lot of really cool stuff that these little nitpicks when you're coding and you're, you have your linter turned on and these things are really annoying, it's really cool to be able to just style it and have all these defaulted in there for you and it just saves it and it does it for you every time you save. So that that is amazing. Uh, one other, couple other plugins I like, and the third and most popular plugin that I like is, if you go back here, and extension, of course, is the Vim plugin. So this is the Visual Studio Code official Vim plugin. It makes it really easy. So if you are used to the Vim, all the Vim uh, bindings and, and moving around your document, it works well. So it's kind of hard to show you, but like I'm hitting one G, I go to the top. I can hit capital G, I go to the bottom. I can hit 10 G or I can, yep, 10 G. And I can kind of move around a little bit. Um, I can go to the end of a line, beginning of a line, go by words, go backwards. I can append, insert. Yeah, so all the normal key bindings are there. I can take, I can do control V here, control V and let's see here. I can do this. Hello. So that's uh, just a few things you can do with that extension. And one last one, I guess I'll throw this one in here. I, you can see I have a lot of angular scripts. So one kind of neat angular one I like, so it's called It's called Angular 2 Switcher. And it just makes it really easy to switch between your files. And so I'll show you. So if I'm on my, if you're an Angular person, you, you will understand this. But I think you could get similar things for Re React and other frameworks. But like, see here, I'm in my TypeScript file. But if I wanted to move to uh, my HTML, I hit Alt and O. And then it just automatically goes to the HTML. Hit Alt and O again, it goes back to <clears throat> my TypeScript file, the component file. If I hit Alt P, I can go to the testing file. So that's pretty cool there. So here's all my tests. If I hit Alt I, I go to my CSS. So just real quick ways to get in and out. You can also go to your HTML file. Let's see here. If Let's say I added the title in. So the title's in right here. I can click on it and hit F12, and it does a peek. So it pulls up 
the exact place inside the component file where that title's at. So that makes it really simple to use. Okay, so I hope you guys liked my quick video on my favorite Visual Studio extensions. Obviously, there's a really lot of cool ones out there. Maybe I'll do a couple more because there's some really good CSS extensions. There's some really good other ones to, to make it fast and quick. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And by the way, I do have a new course out. You can see a link below. It's Create Awesome Vue.js Apps in Next.js. So check that course out. It's only for a limited time. It ends at the end of... Uh, it, it'll actually be closing the registration by Monday. So if you guys are looking to learn Vue.js, Nux.js, looking to learn server-side rendering apps, check it out. It's in the link in the description below. Thanks.